I don't know. I don't know. I'm just gonna hand you money until you give me a chicken. I started my China foodie mission in the sprawling metropolis of Guangzhou. I don't know how to eat this. Then after getting a bit of dim sum in my belly. All right, this one looks good. And this one looks good. And then this one looks good. And this one looks good. I'm feeling fueled up and ready to tour this countryside market. This looks beautiful. I want to use this as a blanket at night and pull it over me. But first, I've been offered some free chicken for breakfast. Although there is one catch. We are in Guangzhou, China in the countryside. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I am hungry and I've been told I can eat all the chickens that I can catch. Let's do this. You gotta be stealthy. You gotta be stealthy. Stealthy. Oh my God, there's so many. There's a whole cackle. Hey, no, come here, I just wanna pet you. Oh my God, they're so fast. They're a little faster than I expected. This is some uneven terrain. They have a leg up on me. They have a chicken leg up on me right now. What the heck? This guy's a genius. Jump down, right here. All right, you know what? That one's cool up there. He's cool, he's cool. It's on. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm closing in. What are you gonna do, bud? What are you gonna do? <laughs> There's gotta be a better way. Isn't there a place where they like sell the chickens for not that much money? We should go to one of those places. Right now we're at a countryside market in Guangzhou, China, where I hear they will actually catch the chickens for you and sell them to you. Smart. Let's go find those chickens. Today, I'm searching out the mythical silky chicken, a chicken known for its fluffy feathers and black meat, skin, and bones. We'll find out if this chicken is indeed bizarre or if it'll be the next big hit on a KFC menu near you. Along the way, we'll explore some uncommon and yummy offerings this market has to, uh, Offer. Uh, so here we can see everyone with their produce, vegetables, fruits. Busy morning, it's 8 a.m. right now, and there's lots of fun things here. Lots of fun things I've never even seen. For example, what is that? What, anybody know what that is? Do you know what that is? I'm told this is a wasabi root. I don't know, it doesn't smell like wasabi. What are you gonna do? All right, I've never seen this before. I don't think I have. It looks like a cross between a cucumber and a okra a little bit. I'm told I should try this. Can I eat this raw? All right, let's see how this exchange goes. Hi, I want just... This little guy, sure, I'll just hand you some money and then if you just give me like a reasonable amount back, that'll be cool. Oh, Shay Shay. Everybody knows I'm a, a big vegetable lover. We've had a lot of just vegetable episodes so far. There's somebody behind me right now who is laughing and cringing before I even bite into this. So you guys know what this is. I have no idea. Some of you know. Oh, a bitter. Oh, oh, it's a bitter melon. Hey guys, I just learned this is called bitter melon. It tastes like a pea pod, but a little bit more bitter, but not melony. There's no melon flavor whatsoever. Let's move on. So look, the goal is to find the chickens, but ultimately, one of my favorite things to do in each new country is to check out the markets and see what new things I can find. Well, this is the fish head store, everybody. One of the classic foods from my childhood. I'm told fish head soup is actually really delicious. One of you out there wants to cook me some fish head soup. I will come over and eat it. Thank you, let me know. P.O. Box 739, or I don't know what I'm saying. And we have left the seafood area and have entered poultry town. Here, you're gonna find ducks, chickens, maybe geese, kind of everything that flies. I've never seen this before. Look at this. I've never eaten a black chicken before. It looks like it was uh, soaking in squid ink. The whole body is black, the feet are black. I wonder if they have those chickens here, the live version. We want fresh. Dang, look at this place. Oh, I spotted something. Let's go this way. Wow, all kinds of sea creatures here. There's even a tiny uh, turtle. Hi, Um, what? I'm not Trevor James, everybody. I can't speak the language, I'm sorry. I can say hello, and I can count to five, and I can say uh, my catchphrase, Tai Haula, and that's it. Should we do a thumbnail? You wanna do a thumbnail with me? Wow. YouTube. You know YouTube? Do you wanna bump? Do you bump ever? Yes! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Yes! We're connecting! Yeah, Shay Shay, is this your melon? This melon? Can I go here? We have a gigantic winter melon. Have you ever seen a, a vegetable, is it a vegetable? 
Winter, melon. Melon is fruit, but it looks like a giant cucumber. This thing is gigantic. Oh. <laughs> that is a heavy plant for a good workout. You get down here, okay? It's called a zercher squat, and then you go like that. Girls ask me a lot for butt exercises. That's gonna be a, a really good one. You always gotta put your exercise equipment back when you're at the gym or people will hate on you, okay? Oh, I got a little dusty. Enough clowning around, we're looking for a chicken. Can I see, can I see what's in here? Can I open it? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's, uh, it's nothing. <laughs> found some breakfast. We've hit the dim sum joint in the morning, okay? It's right in this busy traffic by the market. Oh, they've got pigs in a blanket. This, one, two, okay, two. All right, good, I like this guy. He's a good negotiator. Two, and um, I don't know, some of these. Pigs in a blanket, it's a classic food from my childhood. What you do is you take a hot dog and you put it in some bread. And they have the steamed version of it here, very healthy. So that was approximately a dollar, a little more than a dollar for all this. So here we are. We have our healthy pigs in a blanket. Let's check it out. Oh, it has a little of that like liver pate flavor to it. A classic Chinese traditional food. Actually, probably not. Look how huge this thing is. This is a huge rack of pork. Uh, it looks like pork belly here. They have it draped. Bro. Bro, this looks beautiful. I want to use this as a blanket at night and pull it over me. Like, how crispy and delicious does this look? This place is crazy in the morning. You got to get up early and get on the streets if you want to see the real action. That looks fantastic. You can seriously find everything here. This guy has his own exotic food market. He's got tiny frogs. He's got big frogs over here. These snakes are actually poisonous. Oh, the head is right there. I've never seen anything like this, just random. Uh, exotic food market on the sidewalk right here in Guangzhou, China. I see the chickens. We have entered like kind of the corner of the market. We've got chickens, ducks, all kinds of animals. Let's take a look at these chickens. Oh, look at this. I've never seen one like this before. This is that black one. We saw that really dark skin meat in the market earlier. That's the guy. It's got a puffy head. It looks like uh, some kind of inventor genius. I don't know how they even see. I'm gonna attempt to buy one of these right now using only the words hello and thank you. Let's see, let's see what happens. Ni hao. Um, can I have one, one chicken? Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Don't worry about the camera guy. Can I have uh, one, one chicken? Yi. Oh, Yu Nam. Yu Nam, Yu Nam. He's not, he doesn't speak Chinese. Can I, can I have one? So this happens a lot. The camera guy, he's from Vietnam. His name is Kai, Kai the camera guy. Every country we go to, he gets mistaken for the nationality there. <laughs> We're in the Philippines, they start speaking to him in Tagalog. We're here, they're speaking to him in Cantonese. We can't win. And I'm trying to say, he's from Vietnam. He, he, he doesn't, he can't. He can't speak Chinese. Yeah, yeah, one. Okay, hi. Um. Good, I guess. Oh, this is how they weigh it. This like stick with a weight on it. And that's <laughs> that's how they weigh the chicken. This is ingenious. Okay, is this enough money? More? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just gonna hand you money until you give me a chicken. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Look, if I can go to China with no help and buy a chicken and get it butchered, I think you can go find some street food in the country you're visiting, okay? All you need is a little bit of hand gesturing, some guessing. Yeah, she, she. And, <laughs> oh my God, and sign language. Again, this is part of the culture in China. As far as I've experienced it, people are about fresh, fresh food. And so I know there's some cognitive dissonance for some people. A lot of people out there eat chicken, but when they see the actual chicken that is getting butchered and then that you're eating it, it bothers them. I don't, I don't especially understand that logic. The point isn't to do this 
for sensationalism or to freak people out or to be crazy. It's that this is how people live and this is what people do in China, at least in this area. They're gonna butcher the chicken right here at the market, throw it in a bag, and, uh, and off we go to get it cooked. Not bad, cut. <laughs> Here we are with my man. Ni hao. I, hear, I got you some chicken. Okay, I think he said, give me a second. He's he's working on something here. That is some black chicken. Our uh, expert in-house chef today is gonna be showing me the ropes. From my understanding, the traditional way to make this, it's not by frying, it's not by baking, it's by putting it in a stew. Already, this smells amazing. We have some dates, some roots, ginseng, ginger, and stuff that I don't even know what it is. And also our black chicken, we're gonna let that boil for about an hour, okay? I will see you in one hour, black chicken. No, don't, you gotta, let me go out of the shot. So here we are with our black chicken, and I'm told this isn't exactly a meal, it's more of a starter. So you know, some people have jalapeno poppers, and some people have black chicken. Nice, big chunks of black chicken. Dark, dark skin. Soup smells very aromatic, kind of earthy. We're gonna try some of that broth first. And the broth is... So this is interesting, the broth does not have a strong flavor at all. It has some of the fattiness from the chicken skin. But what I've noticed with a lot of the soups here in China so far is that uh, they don't have much salt at all. What I'm told is that there's a lot of meals where they kind of balance salty foods and non-salty foods uh, so they can kind of complement each other. I don't know, it looks similar to real, you know, to the normal chicken you see. Here we go, black chicken, let's give it a try. The meat is really tender. This was simmered for about an hour. That's not bad. I'll be honest, it doesn't have a strong flavor at all. It kind of tastes like chicken. Not a lot of flavor, not very powerful, and certainly I'm used to a little bit more salt. So that's black chicken. Hey, next time you're in China, uh, why don't you go to a market uh, to a random lady and point to, you can point to your own bird, and um, if they go like this, that, uh, <clears throat> That means they're gonna, they're gonna clean the bird for you. You know what I mean? And I don't mean give it a shower. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. A peace.